Jesus is God, Jesus is Lord, Jesus has the victory. We all have a call, a call to greatness, a desire for it. We want to do something good. Now is your time. You could change the world, and the world needs changing. So get busy. Shalom World, God's own channel. Examine you and I know you I formed you in the womb Before the world was created I knew you true and true Cause you are mine I am yours You are in me And I am in you Cause you are mine I am yours You are in me And I Welcome to You Are Mine. We are John and Colleen Willard, and today's episode is going to be Turning Hostility into Charity. Boy, that's a subject I'm certainly sure a lot of our viewers, John, have encountered, either in family members or in the workplace. Absolutely. Colleen, before we start, though, mm -hmm. um, I'd just like to share with the audience a little bit for those who may be tuning in for the first time is, mm -hmm. 12 and a half years ago, Colleen had a miraculous healing while in Medjugorje after receiving, you know, uh, Holy Communion. And so we've been giving talks and testimonies, you know, concerning her healing and other things related to the Lord for the last 12 and a half years. So a couple of things that we've learned that we'd like to share with you. And one of them is that everybody who's watching this program today has been chosen by God to be here to watch yes. it. And we know that this is inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's nothing that Colleen and I are going to say. It's not our words. These are all coming from the Holy Spirit. We're merely instruments in delivering His message. Mm -hmm. So we ask that you keep that window to your heart open, at least a crack, and you'll see what the Holy Spirit has in mind for you. And even the subject that we're talking about today, hostility, some people say, well, I never encounter hostility. I don't have any of those things within my heart. But I want to share with you a couple letters that we received. Now, as a lot of you viewers know, uh, Shalom receives prayer requests, and we get many of them. And even John and I, amongst our travels, we too have had many prayer requests over the years, asking for prayers on various different subjects. But I want to read to you two in particular that we received recently. One of them is from a woman, and she said, Please pray for my family. We have an upcoming wedding, and the thought of being in the same room with a cousin of mine is driving me crazy. He is rude, mean-spirited, and we just don't get along, and I'm afraid an argument will start. Well, I think the first thing is good is that she reached out for prayer, John. Absolutely. You know, whenever we sense that something isn't right, we need to go ahead and pray about it. But I think a very common situation that many of us have. Mm -hmm. In fact, there who knows, maybe there is a wedding or some family event that you're going to be attending and you have encountered the same thing, either with a family member where <clears throat> a disagreement happened and there hasn't been any forgiveness or reconciliation. The second one, because we sometimes think that hostility is only, you know, in families of getting mad at one another. But the second letter came in, John, that I want to share with the viewers. And this one is from a man at his workplace. He said, please pray for a person I work with. We once got along great, but now that he got the promotion I was going after, we can't stand being on the same job together. Now that's something very typical that we hear. I'm certainly yeah. sure, you know, both of us have been in working environments. You worked, I worked. 
How many times did we come across coworkers who were upset with one another? Many you know? times, many times. And I think the thing that, that the Lord wants us to speak about today, John, is how do we go about combating that? Because it's like a poison within the heart. I mean, have you ever gotten up in the morning and the first thing that you think about rather than, oh, thank you, God, for allowing me the gift to be alive today, all of a sudden that person comes to your mind or that job that you're gonna go to, you're gonna see this person who you don't get along with. And all of a sudden you start your day before you're even in the shower getting ready and you're having these terrible feelings stir up in your heart. You suppress them, but then they seem to keep popping back again. And you know, and Colleen, it leads to some questions that, that I keep hearing is, is, you know, it's like people say, you know, why do people dislike me? I, do, I don't understand, there's no mm -hmm. reason for it. Mm -hmm. So let's turn to scripture, because that's what we like to do is, we like to turn to scripture, and the verses that, that I'm gonna be reading today, it starts out Luke chapter six, and it starts out with verse 27. And it really, God kind of gives us a framework. And he sort of, and he tells us, here's what I would like for you to do. And here's what he says. But I say to you that here, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, to him who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other cheek. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your cloak as well. Give to everyone who begs from you, and of him who takes away your goods, do not ask them again. And as you wish that men would do to you, do so to them. I mean, these are pretty stern words. They are. And that's, Wouldn't you agree? That is something, John. I think, you know, if you haven't opened up scripture, if you have a Bible that's collecting dust in your living room or it's packed in a closet somewhere, take it out, read it. God gives us these guidelines. Like, just for example, what John read now. He wanted you to know this is how we are to react. But the question that they probably wonder, well, how do I get over these feelings? Absolutely. And, and, and the verse goes further and it says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Mm -hmm. For even sinners love those who love them. How true that is. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. That's really an eye-opening, John, because the Lord is really showing us that, that we need to develop that charity for one another. And that's something that, you know, even like with a person who wrote this letter, where they say, please pray for the person I work with. Mm -hmm. We need to turn that around and say, Lord, I need the grace to change. I need the grace to look at this person that maybe God is trying to show me something in this. Yes, maybe the job wasn't, you know, given to this person. Right. Maybe God has something better in store for them. But when all is said and done and we leave this earth, what's the greatest gift that we can take with us? We won't have any jobs. We won't have our homes, our, our possessions or anything else like that. It's how greatly we have loved. And how are we gonna learn that love if God doesn't allow these situations that we encounter for us to grow in? So this is very difficult for me mm -hmm. as I read this and you know, because it makes me walk out of my comfort zone. <clears throat> I don't feel comfortable doing this. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult. But following the Lord is difficult, is it not? It's, it's not easy. He never said that it was going to be easy. So here's the beauty. Then he goes on to tell us what happens if we do do these things? If we do turn the other cheek, if we do, you know, help sinners, if we do, you know, help our enemies and, and forgive our enemies. And the Lord says, but love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High for he is kind to the ungrateful and the selfish. Be merciful, even as your father is merciful. 
So our rewards will be great. We will be sons of the Most High. I don't know that we could get anything better. No, ja, God is really showing us that if we go ahead and walk through this trial and turn our hearts the way that Jesus did on the cross when he went ahead and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Can you imagine when you leave this world and you're in purgatory? Because we know that purgatory does exist. I believe that one of the greatest sorrows in our heart is how much we could have loved but did not. And we'll regret that for all eternity because we would have had an opportunity to demonstrate Jesus. And you know what's so beautiful, John, is that once we learn to dismiss that jealousy, dismiss that anger, and look at the other person and go, you know what? No matter what you did to me, justified or unjustified, or my perception or your perception, I don't want to hold this poison within me because that's exactly what the enemy would want to do. He would want us to leave this earth feeling regret, feeling hostile. Feeling and unloved, feeling, un unwanted. Exactly. So rather than looking at this as such a terrible burden, turn it around and look at it as a treasure that God is giving you. He's giving you an opportunity to go ahead and gain something that maybe you didn't even know that you needed, that you would have an ability through God's grace to achieve a virtue that maybe we're lacking. I think in one of our earlier episodes, we spoke about uh, Saint Faustina, who didn't care for a comment of another nun. And the Lord had said to her, I do not hold this other person accountable, for I have placed her in your life so that you may attain the virtues you are still lacking. So if we go ahead, rather than holding on to that hostility and turning it into to charitable acts of love, then we only gain for ourselves and also the other person who sees that. You know, when we love. Mother Teresa, I love this. We have a picture of her over here, John, that is just a treasure. Mother Teresa said, and this is such a beauty. I, it's very short, but I hope you remember it. She said, to forgive takes love. To forget takes humility. Oh, that's something I think everybody needs Can to have posted that again? on their I mean, that refrigerators. Is so beautiful. You know. To forgive takes love. To forget takes humility. I think that sentence right then and there kind of sh is a little checkpoint for ourselves. If we say, oh yeah, I'm a loving person, but yet at the end of the day, we put our head on the pillow and we look back at the day and realized, did I say this to that person? Did I argue about this and husbands and wives? Oh my goodness, and even kids. You know, when we get mad or angry with one another. Mm -hmm. And I think even in a family life, that's something even parents have to do to help their children too. Because when they grow up, what's one of the first things you find is you're raising your kids. They come home, they talk about somebody in the classroom, and we as parents have a great example to go ahead and show them how to forgive and how to love. Now, when they get older, you know, again, God has given us that free will. But I think these are really the cornerstones right. of how to turn this all around. I have a couple of interesting quotes here. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought I would share them with, you know, with our viewers. And it says, one whose heart is filled with true charity refuses to judge others rashly. Wow, <clears throat> that, is, that is great, John. I remember even in some of the apparitions of Our Lady, one of the things that she's always said is, do not judge. And how often do we go ahead and we pass judgment on somebody before we even know them? It is, and you know, how do we get to that level where where we can act like that. And, and another one, there was a definition of the righteous man. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. We were reading about this the other day. And the righteous man is a person who when people do him wrong, he is more pained by the offense to the Lord than the pain that it causes him. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine that? Some of you viewers are wondering, well, it's so easy that these two people can go ahead and talk about hostility and charity, but they don't know what I have experienced. 
John, read that one more time. Uh, the righteous man is, is a person who when people do him wrong, he is more pain at the offense to the Lord than the pain that, that he endures. What is your goal in life? Is your goal to reach heaven? Is your goal to love God with your whole heart and your whole soul? If it is, then this is a way that God is showing you. He's showing all of us. He's showing humanity. I know your weaknesses. I know when you fail. I know when you stand. Don't harbor these terrible feelings that will do you no good. Because the first person that you hurt is yourself. I can imagine, John, that even the memories of hostility that is done to a person can bring tears and sorrow to the heart. But if you go ahead and you turn that around and really take to heart the reading that John just said, these are words that the Lord had given to a very holy priest. So it isn't something that was just, you know, had no credence, but it does. You have the great gift, the great opportunity to say, okay, Lord, I may not have the strength to go ahead and do this on my own. I can't fight this battle on my own because it's too ugly. But if I go ahead and I turn it around and I put you in the first place in my heart, if I start thinking about all the rejection, all the terrible names, all the terrible things that people said about you when you walk the face of the earth, if I think about your mother, Jesus, of how much pain and sorrow she had to take at hearing her son blasphemy, cut down, ridiculed, made fun at, laughed at, mocked at. And what did she do? She was the model of charity. She was the model of love. Of humility also. She went ahead and took everything that was hurled at her and turned it into prayer. God's asking you to do the same thing. Today, in your own home, write the name of the person down who has hurt you so much. Place it at your prayer table, and if you don't have a prayer table in your home, make one. It is a reminder of how much we need God, and God needs you because He created us in love. Start praying for that person. Ask God to bless them more abundantly than even yourself. Those are all ways of acts of charity. Colleen, we're, we're coming to the end of this first session, and so we're going to need to take a little break, mm -hmm. and then uh, Father Sparrow will come out afterwards. But before we take a break, I'd like to remind all of our viewers out there that if you do have a prayer request or a question, Shalom has a lot of resources. So let me give you the email address for you to send your requests, and that's prayer at shalomworld.org. And we'll be praying for you. Stay tuned and don't leave. You are mine, you are in me, and I am in you. Media is powerful. It can change a culture. It can change a whole generation. It can impact the entire globe. Two years ago, Shalom World TV was a dream. Today, it's a reality. A commercial-free, high-definition television network broadcasting from the United States of America, reaching 375 million English-speaking people around the globe. We want to reach to the ends of the earth. Throughout the year, Shalom missionaries work day and night to accomplish this mission, to produce programs that evangelize the culture. What is wrong with others? Tonight on C time for you for divine knowledge we want to continue this mission we want to produce more programs to impact this generation positively will you be with us can you take a commitment of donating just $25 a month for the next 12 months we assure you of our prayers 
visit shalomworld.org slash donate today. We thank you for your generosity. Welcome back to You Are Mine. Joining us now on the set is Father Michael Sparrow. Welcome, Father. Thank you. Delighted to be here. Father, it's always a blessing to have you here. Today we were talking, as you know, about two situations. A woman who had a cousin that she was angry with and holding hostility, and the second is a co-worker uh, who also could not uh, work in the same environment almost, you know, because of a job promotion that he did not get. It's a tough one, isn't it, Father, to have all this hostility inside against another person and families and in workplaces? I think of all the topics we've uh, addressed, this one of forgiveness is something that uh, all of us struggle with and everybody can relate to. And yet there's no teaching in the scripture that's more central to Jesus' message than this message of forgiveness. John, earlier in the program, you wrote, read that section from uh, Luke chapter 6. But there are so many other scriptures in addition to that that we... Oh, we, I know, Father. And, and you just, I know you have a list there of all of those. Jesus saying, the measure you measure will be measured back to you. Or think... Uh, even in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us as we forgive. Or my absolute favorite that we go to is Jesus hanging on the cross and he's looking at all of the people who have just engineered his death and he says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They didn't know what they were doing because they didn't know how deeply they were loved. And I think the key to being able to forgive others is to steep ourselves deeply in the knowledge of how deeply God loves us and forgives us. When we remember our own sins and we remember how much the Lord has done for us and the graciousness of his mercy, that's the, that's the door to opening our own hearts mm -hmm. toward mm -hmm. forgiving others. When we forget that the Lord has forgiven us, then it's easy to become judgmental towards others. But when we remember our own shortcomings, then it makes it a lot easier to be forgiving toward others. So that's really the first checklist that we should do with ourselves if we feel that way, right, Father? That's step number one. Mm -hmm. That's a great starting point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And I love the point, Colleen, that you made earlier in the program that forgiveness is an opportunity for spiritual growth. Not all of us resist <laughs> growth. Not, none of us <laughs> want to embrace that, that easily. But if you, I think if we're honest and we look back at our, our lives, when we're challenged with a hard situation, and these situations of forgiving a family mm -hmm. member or somebody at a workplace, those are very difficult, but those are the kinds of opportunities that will transform us into mediocre Christians, into saints. If, number one, we ask for that grace, and number two, we make a decision to forgive. Sometimes we forget that Love is a decision. Forgiveness is a decision. Gradually, our emotions will catch up, but it starts with that decision of, I choose to forgive you. I choose the path of love. That's such a good way to look at it, Father, because a lot of our viewers, I'm sure, probably didn't even think, you know, that, yeah, it's their choice. Yes. And what Jesus is calling us to is a spiritual maturity here. This is not accepting abuse. So if we're in an abusive situation and someone is demeaning you and you're feeling yourself physically, emotionally ab abused, then you need to stand up to, th to that abuse. Jesus is not calling us to allow ourselves to, to be demeaned and injured. He's calling us to extraordinary maturity. When we know we are loved, that's where our power comes from. That's where our strength comes from. But if we don't know that, and a person is heaping insults on us, then we say, well, I am really a bad person. I am really a terrible, terrible yeah. person. And we start to believe that ab ab about ourselves. That's exactly not what God wants. God wants us to know how deeply we are loved. And when we stand in that love, that's where the power comes from. 
Father, that's such yes. a great clarification because a lot of people, when they read the scriptures and they see, they see turn the other cheek, they think they're supposed to take all the abuse. But mm -hmm. that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And that's not what our Lord wants us to do. What he wants us is to have an invisible shield around ourselves. That shield is God's grace mm -hmm. and God's mercy and the knowledge of how much he loves us. But all of us are human. And, and I love the point that uh, Dennis, Matthew, and Sheila Lynn have made in their book, Don't Forgive Too Soon. They connect the process of forgiveness with the five stages of death and dying. So mm. forgiveness is not all or nothing. I forgive, I don't forgive. Yes. St. Thomas Aquinas said there's more than 20 levels of forgiveness. That's St. Thomas wow. Aquinas. The Lynn yeah. summarized it in those five levels. Number one is denial. I'm not really mad. No, I'm not <laughs> mad at all. I forgive you. <laughs> all right, then we're living in... steam's coming out of his <laughs> yeah, ears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've never experienced that, have no. we? <laughs> That's level number one. We have to acknowledge I'm hurt. Number two, to acknowledge I'm angry. And to be present to those feelings and to bring those feelings into our prayer. The third level is one of bargaining. If I would have done this, if she would have done that, try, try and reason our way out of it with some kind of bargaining. The fourth stage is despair and discouragement. Well, this is, this is always the way it's gonna be and there's nothing I can do about it. And then to come to fi stage five, which is one of peaceful acceptance of coming to that reconciliation or acknowledging this person does not like me but I'm gonna to continue to choose to love them because Christ has loved me Beautiful. first. Beautiful. Father, that is a lot for our viewers to absorb and take in. And there's a beautiful transformation that can happen to them. Could you repeat the name of that author in the book? Because I'm sure some of our viewers would want to go ahead and obtain it. The book that. is called Don't Forgive Too Soon. And it's by the Lynns, Dennis, Matthew, and Sheila Lynn. Don't forgive too soon. There was a pretty good insight. In fact, a lot that, as I said, we weren't even aware of. Exactly. And one closing tool that St. Ignatius recommend is that we take some time each day to examine our day, to look mm -hmm. back over the day, and to name our blessings, to savor our blessings, and those areas that we struggle, ask God's grace for those help, for God's grace and help in those areas where we're not yet forgiving. Count our blessings, savor our blessings, ask for help in those areas that we need it. That's beautiful. So for all those viewers who are wondering how you are going to handle either a coworker who is hostile or family, Father, you have just given us and the Lord through his word the tools that we need. Father, before we close though, can, you, uh, can we ask you to give us, Colleen and I, and our viewers a blessing? Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Jesus, you taught us to forgive 70 times, seven times. And we acknowledge that none of us can do that except through your grace. And so we're asking for that grace to be able to forgive our enemies, to forgive those who injure us. Steep us in the knowledge of your love and your mercy. Protect us in our relationships and help us work to that peace that is the earmark of belonging to you. May your blessing guide us and protect us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father Michael. It's been a blessing as always, and I know a lot of our viewers have benefited from what the Lord brought to us to speak. And I'd like to remind our viewers, if you have any prayer requests, send them to prayer at shalomworld.org. And Father, if you would join Colleen and I in closing the program with those same words, that Vitska from Medjugorje said to Colleen. Praise God! You are in me and I am in you. On the great solemnity of the Epiphany in which Christ is manifested to the world as our Lord and Savior, I pray that uh, God will bless uh, all of you, all you wonderful viewers of Shalom World, that God may abundantly fill you with uh, the light of the gospel and give you uh, each day the grace 
to live in accord with the gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom world, God's own channel.